Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Show. Uh, today our uh, topic, subject matter, will be insomnia. Major problem here in the United States due to lifestyle, diet, lack of exercise, and a lot of issues that we're going to discuss today. The primary um, requirements that most adults and children uh, require, adults are seven to nine hours of sleep to feel good and wake up vibrant and be able to last throughout the day. And kids, particularly smaller children, require 10 plus hours. So a lot of kids who are hitting the sack at uh, you know, 11 o'clock and then getting up for school at seven, that isn't gonna cut it. They're not gonna get proper amounts of sleep for growth. Uh, or the ability to think properly throughout the day. Um, there are five stages of sleep. We have uh, stage one and two, which are light sleep, which is about 50% uh, of the sleep that we are engaged in. It's usually the first part of the sleep. And these, uh, these stages will last for about two hours. So you'll have two hours of, of these five stages. Stage three, stage four is that deeper delta state, 30% of the sleep is that, and then 20% is what's called your REM sleeping, where it's your dream, uh, dream sleeping. It's where you'll have rapid eye movement and sometimes a little bit of jerkiness to the body. But each stage lasts about two hours, or excuse me, each uh, of the five stages lasts about two hours, and you go through these multiple times uh, during the night. The causes of insomnia numerous and difficult. So when you're going to your physician and you're saying, I can't sleep, um, oh boy, the checklist goes on as to potentially the reasons why. 50% um, of stress, we or excuse me, 50% of insomnia or the inability to sleep is due to stress, anxiety, and depression. The mind just doesn't shut down. People are sad. They don't want to sleep. Their serotonin's drop. So, and often with reasons or without reasons. Um, aging, 50% of seniors have uh, sleeping difficulties, uh, ranging from hormonal DHEA, uh, DHEA changes, melatonin changes. 50% um, of your uh, population 65 and above, that's pretty substantial uh, of, uh, of a segment of the population uh, having sleep problems. Stimulants, including coffee, uh, chocolate, tea, particularly in the afternoon hours, stimulate the body, stimulate the adrenal glands so people will lay there and they'll just be wide awake or they won't want to go to sleep. Um, sugar imbalances, indigestion, uh, when you don't have proper sugar, you're diabetic or you're hypoglycemic, sugar imbalances, the body will wake you up to feed it. So if you don't have balanced sugars, as in the case oftentimes with diabetes or hypoglycemia, your body will wake you back up again. Uh, indigestion, particularly if you eat too late at night. Um, boy, the digestion shuts down um, after you go to sleep. And if you've got a nice full belly, that food just sits in there and it gurgles and it trumbles and it does whatever else, but you're not going to sleep very well. And if you have a high caloric diet or a diet, uh, or excuse me, a meal, a high caloric meal, um, it'll just sit in there oftentimes and doesn't have adequate amounts of time to digest before you go to bed. So try to eat your dinner or your last meal of the day a little bit, um, larger meals that is, a little bit earlier, a six, five o'clock, so that it has a chance to digest. Remember, it takes about two to four hours for a meal to digest. Um, alcohol. And a lot of people will take alcohol to calm them down and settle down. Hopefully they can sleep better. Aha, but it doesn't allow you to sleep soundly. So you won't get that deep delta sleep that you get in stage three and four. It's really necessary to feel very rested. Um, certain medications such as antidepressants, dilantin, beta blockers, which are high blood pressure medications, and thyroid medications or thyroid disorders. Uh, can interfere with sleep. So as with been with almost every one of our shows, we show you a list of medications that can cause a problem. There are a lot of other ones, but these uh, tend to be the most uh, or the largest offenders of uh, causing insomnia. Hormonal changes. Menopausal or perimenopausal women uh, will see a fluctuation in the, which their progesterone levels fall off. Uh, as we age, our DHEA and our melatonin levels, uh, melatonin a natural substance that the body releases to help it fall asleep and stay asleep throughout the night. 
Uh, when those levels drop off, then you get sleep disturbances. Uh, vitamin deficiencies, particularly proper amounts of calcium, magnesium, iron levels, and B12 can cause uh, sleep disruption or insomnia. Uh, we'll get uh, uh, particularly muscle cramping, restless leg syndrome when you don't have adequate amounts of iron B12 or Cal Mag, and people will go and throw themselves on a drug without realizing that they're just simply nutritionally deficient in these particular items. Uh, breathing disorders, for example, uh, asthma, obviously, if you're not breathing properly, or sleep apnea. 5% um, of the United States population that we know suffers from sleep apnea, and so that's an issue to be aware of. You're not going to get deep sleep if you have that snoring going on, and neither will your partner, uh, if you have the snoring going on, the apnea, asthma, breathing difficulties in that regard. Uh, lack of exercise and poor diet. If your body is not moving, good luck because you're not going to be using your calories, you're not improving your circulation, your body's just going to be like a slug. And if you never get things moving and going, the body doesn't really sense it needs much rest. So. Uh, mental stimulation, and this has become more of a recent problem within the last 10 years. Uh, a lot of uh, Americans get on their computers at night and they'll play their computer games, they'll you know do research or they're emailing their grandkids or all that kind of stuff. And we don't know exactly why, but it does affect um, the brain's ability to shut down at night. So what most of the experts are recommending is to get off the computers at least two hours before you go to bed because it can keep the mind going. We don't know if it's because of the, the positive ions that the computers produce or if it's because of just the mental stimulation. But, so try to avoid overstimulating the brain uh, towards the latter parts of the evening. Um, we've addressed some of the causes um, and I'd like to address some of the solutions. Um, diet. Um, when we talk about the types of foods that we need to eat, we need to look at a well-balanced diet. Um, obviously, if you're sitting there doing coffee and donuts, grabbing the quick um, a hamburger or those kinds of things, this, this is a problem. Uh, you're not going to get adequate nutrition. You're not going to get adequate energy. Your blood sugars are going dis to get disrupted. And your liver. Um, also, too, which performs over 500 different functions, is going to get sluggish, and that also can somewhat interfere with your, uh, with your sleep as well. So what we like to do is we like to eat, at dinner, we like to eat foods high in an amino acid called tryptophan, and that would include things like turkey, chicken, yogurt, tuna, figs, bananas. There's a, a lot of other foods, and you can go online and you can look those up, that have a high tryptophan uh, amino acid uh, release of them. Uh, at dinner, make sure you have uh, complex carbs. Those complex, co complex carbs, uh, meaning things such as whole grains, whole grain pastas, those kinds of things, and to, to a, a limitation, not an overabundance, help keep blood sugars a more stable when combined with proteins and fats. So kind of almost like a little zone diet. And obviously, if you're uh, diabetic, then you have to watch those carbohydrates. You have to keep the proteins and fats higher. Um, drinking lots of water. Most people throughout the day, uh-uh, the water isn't happening. And water is how we flush the system, detox the body, get things moving, uh, tra helps us transfer energy and everything else. And when you're not drinking water, your body stays toxic. So the recommendation is a glass of water every two hours. And most people are thinking, God, that's a lot of water. That's eight glasses of water a day. You know, you're going to have to in some way try to fit that in your schedule. With me, a, bo a water bottle goes everywhere, uh, and drinking good uh, reverse osmosis uh, quality water uh, is a very important thing for diet and to aid not having sleep problems. Uh, avoiding, obviously we've discussed this uh, earlier on, avoiding chocolate, tea, coffee, alcohol. Um, I know a lot of my friends like to have a glass of wine with their dinner not only raising the, the content of their, uh, their calorie content of their uh, meal, uh, but also uh, causing them not to be able to sleep as well at night, particularly if they have more than one glass of wine. So, and alcoholics, we have blood sugar issues, we have alcohol issues, we have a lot of things involved. So, 
um, if you're doing a lot of this or, or have a family member that's an alcoholic, you may notice a lot of they're just exhausted during the day. Uh, it's because they're not going to sleep adequately and their blood sugars are going to be all out of whack. Um, exercise. Now, obviously, if you're not moving, getting the body, getting it tired, doing something with the body. Uh, I don't care whether it's vacuuming the house, going out and mowing the lawn, or going to the gym. Whatever your choice of exercise is, you need to move. Um, the slug isn't going to sleep well. Uh, it just ain't going to happen. Or he's going to sleep in the day, not be able to sleep at night. It's just, and I shouldn't just say he, she. Um, whenever you're a slug, your body doesn't burn off the calories. It doesn't detox. It doesn't move the lymphatic system. It just stays toxic. So we need to move the body along, get it to detox, drinking lots of water, getting adequate amounts of good foods, not doing a lot of caffeines or uh, caffeine-containing products. Soda also is a big one, too, also containing sugar, too. If we can get that into balance from the start, that resolves most of these other issues. There is a segment of the population when that is not resolved with diet and exercise and getting rid of some of the caffeine in which we'll find uh, supplementation is very helpful. Um, a calcium lactate or a calcium citrate, calcium lactate is a muscle combination, in a two to one ratio with magnesium, relaxes those muscles, uh, helps them calm down, helps you want to sleep a little bit better. Uh, that in combination with B12 and then obviously iron levels as well can help People, particularly with restless leg, it helps them relax. If you're calcium magnesium deficient, you are not going to sleep sound. Um, melatonin. Uh, standard dosages are between 1 and 5 milligrams. I've seen as much as 10 milligrams. Um, some of them are under the tongue. They have a quicker absorption. They're called sublingual. Some of them you swallow, uh, and it goes right in the digestive tract. Melatonin is a natural substance that the body releases to help it fall asleep and stay asleep. So... Uh, as we grow older, our melatonin levels tend to drop off or for a, in a lot of stress or anxiety or going through a stressful event like a death of a child or a spouse or a grandma, something that really stresses you out, your melatonin levels won't release or melatonin won't release or produce. So supplementing with melatonin, particularly I've seen in, in a lot of my senior um, customers, really can be very helpful. Starting off with a low dosage and gradually increasing until you find a dosage that helps you stay asleep but doesn't make you droggy when you wake up. B-complexes. Uh, B-complex, uh, which is B1, B2, B6, niacin, you'll see they'll say B-complex on them. And, and good multiple vitamins will oftentimes have a, a good regiment of uh, B-complexes. Um, it helps you alleviate physiological stress it helps increase serotonin uh, production and output. And it, in addition, it also can help with REM sleep. And that's your ability to dream. So I hear a lot of people say, ask, do you, you, know, do you dream at all? Well, I don't remember. You know? And so you should be able to remember a few of your dreams at least once a week uh, to where you know you're getting at least some type of REM sleep. Uh, there is a, a couple of products, one's called 5-HTP uh, and tryptophan. Both of those have been shown, and I know we have a, a couple of local physicians, both uh, here in Lompoc and then in Grover Beach, where I have one of my other stores. And they recommend taking these about a half hour to an hour before bedtime to help increase serotonin production. They cannot, however, be taken with antidepressants and certain other medications, but that can help you sleep. Remember how we talked about the tryptophan-rich foods? Well, these are just a little bit, uh, a greater degree uh, when those, the tryptophan-rich foods won't work. Uh, there are herbs that can help with sleep as well. Passion flower, valerian, hops, uh, all these types, and chamomile as well, all these uh, types of herbs are called nervines. They work on the nervous system to calm the nerves down. And when you calm the nerves down, oftentimes you can go to bed and go to sleep. So about a half hour, uh, 500 milligrams of each, or you can try one at a time to help you fall asleep and, and relax a little bit on the nervous system. Iron. Um, when you find or uh, you're iron deficient, and that is through blood work, uh, usually through a finger prick or if they pull blood, um, vial out. Um, make sure when you do iron sources, make it food sources 
and not ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate is scrap metal chemically altered and given to humans in a pharmaceutical or by usually a local drugstore. Ferrous sulfate is poorly absorbed, causes constipation, digestion, and a ma maximum of 10 to 15 percent absorption rate. So look for whole food sources by glycinates, ones that come from whole foods if you have iron uh, issues and you won't end up with constipation and the other issues that accompany it. Um, B6, which you can get in a B complex, B B6 in a 50 milligram dosage oftentimes is used with uh, pregnant women to help them sleep, uh, particularly earlier on when they're having a lot of the barfing motion. Um, that can tend to alleviate some of that uh, in addition, help them sleep a little bit better. There are various other types of uh, alternate, alternative treatments as well. There's homeopathy, homeopathic medicine, which was one of the original AMA medications uh, available out there that have no contraindications with any medications. And there is various ones like cafe cruda, other things that work to help with sleep depending on what your issues are. There's uh, Bach flower essence remedies. Uh, Bach flower essence remedies uh, invented about 60 years ago. They work with emotional reasons as to why you may not be able to sleep. Uh, I've used a product called Rescue Remedy that I spray in my mouth and, and it helps me rest and takes my anxiety and it's just a flower essence uh, combination that uh, just kind of makes you relax. Um, there's an excellent product I've used uh, personally and there's a lot of different manufacturers, one called Theanine. And what Theanine does is it changes the brain wave patterns from a very stressed beta wave pattern to a very relaxed alpha wave pattern. When you're in an alpha wave state, which is your uh, initial light, waves, uh, light sleep, you're more relaxed, you're focused, your brain isn't churning all the death. So theanine is really appropriate if the brain just doesn't like to shut down. Uh, also is utilized a lot uh, with ADD uh, and ADHD kids to help them to uh, get to focus a little bit more uh, on the tasks that they're doing. Um, essential oils, things that you can apply uh, to your body or you can inhale through uh, various oils. Lavender, um, my grandma used to keep a lavender uh, sachet under her pillow and it would help her sleep at night. Lavender is known and you can rub it on the bottom of your baby's feet. There's also marjoram, which is not real common and not as pleasant of a smell as lavender, that can also help in an essential oil uh, or in the actual herbs itself. You can make sachets and put them in your pillow to help you sleep as well. Uh, other re recommendations uh, we discussed already, uh, trying to avoid late time computer usage. Uh, use your bed for sex and sleep only. Uh, if you're sitting there reading and watching TV and the mind is going, you got your laptop going there, you got your cell phone here, your Blackberry there, the sleep isn't going to come along too well uh, when you're talking <laughs> about the bed because your, your mind and your body's not going to associate the bed with sleep. So. Get into a sleep routine also, and most of us learn this with our babies when they're born, that we get them into a routine and getting them prepared for bed, whether it's a bath, drinking a nice cup of chamomile tea, you know, washing your face. You have a routine that you do that your mind gets used to in a habit form that you get used to what happens before you go to bed and to sleep. Um, there are testing procedures that I've written down here that I think could be very helpful if, uh, for your physician that can be run to determine um, if they can't, all these other types of things don't work, they can try and help them figure out what's going on as far as your sleep uh, deprivation and insomnia. A sleep study, particularly if it's a possibility that you may have uh, sleep apnea, very important diagnostic tool. Hormone testing. Uh, DHEA, uh, uh, particularly uh, in, in older people, testosterone levels, all these types of uh, hormones can affect thyroid hormone testing. Very, very important to know that maybe that might be what the issue is affecting sleep. Vitamin and mineral analysis to uh, make a determination as to whether or not you may be nutrient deficient. Uh, in magnesium shows up quite often and there's an estimation that about 92% of Americans are magnesium deficient. So magnesium is what helps muscles relax and if you don't have adequate magnesium you will not relax very well. Um, testing for anemia 
And there are different forms of anemia, which can be from a B12 uh, problem, absorption problem, or can be an actual iron uh, absorption or utilization problem, so checking for anemia. Blood sugars, to see whether or not the blood sugars uh, are remaining stable. Does the person um, have hypoglycemia or is, it a pre is the person a pre-diabetic? Do we need to change the foods around a little bit so that we can get a better release of sugars uh, in the evening hours? Food and environmental allergies. Allergies, and we discussed already asthma, uh, can be a major contributing factor. Food allergies and that if you eat something, your body's having an allergic reaction, it isn't going to fall asleep. So if you're sitting there and you're having your nice little cup of milk before you go to bed and you're allergic to milk, why isn't this milk putting me to sleep? Uh -uh. It's because you are having an uh, a allergic reaction. It can be to all kinds of foods. There are blood tests uh, that can be taken that will run a panel of like the 99 most common foods. And you can find out what foods you have sensitivities to and avoid them. Uh, allergy testing environmental where they poke and prod you. We can get down to the bottom of what maybe some of the allergies might be in that regard as well. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. We're going to move on to our next uh, segment, which is our fitness portion. Welcome to the fitness portion of our show. And today I would like to show a couple of exercises that I believe will help lift uh, with so many women wanting breast augmentation and, and because I have a little saggy, droop, uh, little saggy boobs here. These types of exercises will help give you breast support uh, as well as maybe build a little bit of muscle underneath the breast tissue so that the breasts will be a little bit more enhanced. So the first exercise I'd like to show you, this is a, a woman's push-up. And basically, what we do here is we bend the knees, we keep the back straight, and we go down and up, and down and up. And if you can do uh, hmm, uh, three sets of 10 every other day, that would be very helpful for uh, breast, uh, building the um, pectoral muscles underneath the breast for a breast lift and support. Another exercise that I like, and I'd like to show you today, is involving a lightweight. Uh, today I brought with me 15 pounders, but obviously um, I've been doing this a long time, so those are probably a little bit heavy for most people. But if you can start with like maybe a five pounder or a, ver a, a can of uh, canned goods something, just to give you a little bit of resistance in this exercise. And what you do is you get uh, laid down on something, um, a soft, either a bed or a, a nice soft carpeted floor, or if you have a bench, that would be great as well. You put your weights up in a straight motion. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring them down and you're going to touch your elbows to the ground. And see how I have my elbows slightly bent? I'm not bringing this all the way down because I don't want to overstress my wrists. And then I bring it up and I squeeze at the top of the motion, the muscle. And then I bring that down and squeeze at the top of the motion. And if you can do two or three sets of 10, um, you know, three times a week, just like your push-ups, I think you'll notice probably after about three to six months, a little bit of help with the saggy support. Thank you, and next we'll be moving on to our uh, research analyst, Ralph Turciano. Welcome to the research portion of our show. And at this time, I'm going to turn this over to our research analyst, Ralph Turciano. Ralph? And thank you. Well, as news travels fast like this, as so well this segment, we found out today that watermelon has a Viagra type effect. I'm sure plenty of you probably already heard that already. In addition to that, they found that watermelon in the rind itself contains large amounts of citrulline as well as lycopene. The citrulline works fairly similar to Viagra, but keep in mind, you don't have to eat the whole watermelon to get that citrulline, just the rind. Just leave out the good parts. After that, we discovered that they compared Weight Watchers versus Fitness Centers. This was done by the University of Missouri. What they discovered simply was after a 12-week period of time, 
that generally the Weight Watchers group lost more weight. However, there's a caveat to that. The weight was primarily lean muscle, not body fat. In fact, they lost virtually no body fat, just muscle. And this was important because losing lean tissue, according to the University of Missouri uh, researchers, often slows the metabolism. They say, quote unquote, what your body is made of is more important than what you weigh. They did the study using CAT scans, and the unfortunate part was that 50% of the people that started the exercise program that got benefits dropped out after six months. Then, another surprising uh, star for caffeine. They found out, and this was done by the Institute of Medical Research in Sydney and Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology University. That caffeine not only helps you prior to exercise, but also helps you tremendously after exercise. How, you may ask? They discovered that caffeine helps with glycogen uptake into the muscles. Within four hours after workout, increases glycogen uptake by 66%. And basically, what they're trying to say is this, quote unquote, if you have 66% more fuel for the next day's training or competition, there is absolutely no question that you will go farther and you will go faster, said Dr. Hawley from the Institute of Medical Research. Then we come back to the, the pharmaceutical world. Statins had an unexpected effect on the brain. There's a certain cell called progenitor cells. They discovered something interesting. These progenitor cells and so-called stem cells in the brain were forced to do jobs that were not supposed to do due to statin use. They discovered that the simvastin and provastin, which are commonly used drugs at normal dosages, actually change the function of these brain cells, which are required to help you if you get brain damage, trauma, hemorrhage, or anything else along those lines. And quote unquote, they said it's pretty much like from a baseball team where all you have is either pitchers or hitters. It creates an imbalance in the brain. And 3% of the brain cells are made of this. Now, what they said is this, in their own words. Our results suggest a need of awareness for the possible toxicities occurring to long-term statin use and identify one such potential toxicity. The premature differentiation and attendant long-term depletion of the oligodendrocyte progenitor cells of the adult brains concluded from the University of Rochester Medical Center. And the worst part about it, when combined with diabetic drugs, it magnified the effect. Then after that, a simple report coming out of Tufts University on drug development. They discovered that drug companies, quote unquote, again, innovation comes mainly from the National Institute of Health, supported research in academic medical centers. Drug companies do almost absolutely no innovation. And just to bring you a little bit of history, remember Bristol-Myers Squibb and Taxil? $484 million of research in taxpayer dollars, $9 billion profit by the year 2002, and only $35 million paid back to the U.S. taxpayers, and they, that was just the beginning. Yeah, something has to be done about that because the corruption is uh, belittles even the third world country. Well, thank you very much, and that's the segment for now. Hi, thank you very much for joining the Fit and Healthy Show. We once again hope that this encourages you to uh, do further research and look things up for yourself. Thank you. So when Greg's going like this. Like this.